What's up guys, it's Paul from Boosted Films and in this video we're going to take a look at this Boosted Fabrication built front cross member brace made for the Evo 8 or 9. So this video is going to compare this front cross member brace to an OEM brace, look at a bit more details about the build, and then we're also going to go into how to remove your old cross member brace and how to install this new one. And we'll also cover a little bit about the benefits of this brace and also the different options you can have. So about the particular brace I got, I wanted to keep my car more street friendly. So there are a couple options that you can get to do that. Uh, or at least the main option for me is to get this poly bushing uh, here and rather than a solid bushing, you could get a solid bushing option, but that's not something I would probably recommend unless you are like going full race car. You can also get it with or without this jack point. I decided of course to get the jack point on mine because I do utilize this at times to jack up my car. It may add a little bit of weight uh, to get this, but not much. So that's also an option when you order this. And then you can get a gloss black like I have here, or you can get a wrinkle black powder coating when you order. I will also mention that this is not a sponsored video, but this product is from BoostedFabrication.com. So if you're interested in learning more about, you know, buying this particular product, that's where you would want to go. They also have an Instagram and Facebook page. Again, this isn't sponsored, but I do like to try to help other people that are building products for the Evo world since, you know, that's so much of what I'm about is, is the Evo platform. So when there is a good product, I do want to take a look at it and I want to support people in that area. And I imagine you're curious about pricing. So yeah, pricing for something like this, depending on the options you get, will run anywhere from about $230 to $250, but it is recommended that you check the Boosted Fabrication website uh, for current pricing. So what exactly does this do? Where does it connect? Well, this uh, two bolts here would connect to your front core support of your Evo 8 or 9, and then it would run to the back here where it would connect to your front subframe. And of course, in between here, this is where you'd have uh, basically a connection to a motor mount, um, or realistically, it's going to connect to a mount that goes to your transmission. So it's going to be a transmission mount that it connects to here. So why would you want to buy this? Well, one of the main things is going to be weight reduction. Uh, when I weighed this particular bar right here, it weighed in at about 5.3 pounds, about half the weight that you would get uh, with the stock, the fully stock bar. But then also it should help reduce the amount of engine torque associated with hard driving and shifting. And from other reviews I've read online, they did say it would help reduce clutch chatter and uh, decel noise. So for comparison's sake here, this is the stock front cross member bar that I took out. Other than this piece here is not stock. This is the block, I'm not sure how you say it, um, motor mount, uh, aftermarket mount that was in my black Evo. So that's comparing it to this. When I weighed this one, it was about 9.4 pounds. And again, this one was about 5.3. And a main reason I also got this piece was to swap out <laughs> this baby right here. This pretty, pretty piece is actually, if I can get it in frame without scraping the new one, this pretty piece is off, you may have guessed, the Rusty Silver Evo I bought. And um, I should turn it around. And as you can see, this piece is pretty much garbage, ready to get thrown away. Uh, one thing to note, of course, too, with, if you do go with this bar, you're going to lose this tie bar here that comes with the OEM. You know, it's an OEM piece that comes on the Evo 8 or 9. Most people get rid of it anyway, but of course there is no mounting uh, place for that on this bar. But this whole rusty old piece right here with the OEM motor mount actually weighed about 11.4 pounds. So that is, you know, some decent weight reduction to go from this whole piece to this piece. And of course it looks so much nicer. So now I'm just going to show you a bit more about the motor mounts and the bolts that are associated with uh, this bar that we're going to need. Uh, that Just to give you a better feel for everything involved, these are all OEM bolts. They should be reusable on this bar. The one thing I did notice that is a bit different is kind of the thickness uh, where all three of these bolts would bolt up. They should work just fine. I talked to uh, the, the maker of this and they said they've sold over 200 of these bars and no one's had issue and it sounds like most of them use the OEM bolts. The one difference is that they're going to drive in a bit farther 
because you're going to notice the thickness of this piece here and then where this bolt goes through is going to be different since it's thicker here compared to this piece it's going to stick up a little bit further um, where it threads in but from what I can tell, and I will confirm, of course, when I do install it, that that shouldn't be an issue. You could probably add a washer here if you wanted to add a bit more of the spacing. But this is also designed a bit differently here from, you know, what I can see. I wouldn't mind seeing this a bit thicker on this piece. But, of course, I'm not a designer, fabricator. One other item I did notice initially is with this aftermarket motor mount, and the way this bolt goes in, it seemed like a pretty tight fit, tighter tolerance. And then I saw this one and I thought, whoa, that's pretty big. Uh, but then I realized compared to OEM, this one's actually even tighter. So this OEM piece here has a really big hole. I think they just want this to be more uh, universal for different applications. Um, so I really don't have any concern with this not being as tight here. I mean, that's not really the point anyways to be super tight in, in this um, because all you're really doing is taking this uh, mount that's on the transmission and you're just clamping it to this piece uh, so that bolt shouldn't really be you know doing much more than holding this this bolt and nut is going to hold it uh, to that piece so again since the oem piece here um, had this you know mount like that it, it definitely alleviated any of my concerns about uh, tolerances and being kind of tighter on this bolt it obviously looks you know like a nicer piece here but again I wouldn't mind seeing it a bit thicker, um, just to kind of match where the OEM bolt would go in, but that's more my personal opinion. Again, if you actually have one of these or you've ran a bar like this, uh, please let me know what your thoughts have been. Uh, you know, check the comments section for other people's opinions uh, and other people's experiences with this bar. And I will also update as well, if I do run into any potential issues uh, with this at all, I will up make an update video about it if anything really needs to be said. I also do like that this tow hook is just a little better uh, design, basically a little better, you know, it doesn't stick out as much actually either. Right now with my current setup and the way the front mount intercooler was in my car, I had to notch out a little piece just to make sure this wouldn't touch. Um, so now this is a bit shorter here, so that's actually gonna work out better. And of course, boosted fabrication, boosted films, it's kind of cool to have that little BF on there. So this is all the information I have right now. Of course, as I mentioned, I always encourage comments in the comments section to be free and open. So please, uh, let's continue the discussion there. Let me know your thoughts. And this product review type stuff is a bit new for me. So hopefully I can do more of it in the future. Hopefully you like watching these videos. And if you are interested in having me review your Evo 8 or 9 part, please email me paul at boostedfilms.com or you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. So the final part of this video is really gonna be how to remove this old uh, piece here and how to install this new one and take a look at the fitment of everything. So that's about it for this look at the product. Thanks for watching. We'll cut to the how-to section. So for filming purposes and to get better lighting, I drove my Evo out of my garage. Of course, if you have a garage, I'd recommend doing it in the garage because, well, you never know when it might snow. So what I'm going to do here is jack up my car and put it on jack stands. Technically, you might be able to do this without jacking up your car, although it's going to be pretty hard to get underneath it. Uh, if you have your front bumper off, you might be able to get underneath there. But of course, utilize a hoist if you have one. Uh, we're going to do uh, jack stands. So I recommend having the car in gear. I recommend having your e-brake on. And I recommend chalking the wheel, do something to hold it to keep it from potentially rolling. Of course, you also want to make sure you're on a fairly level surface when you're doing this as well. So safety first, whenever you're going to go underneath a car, of course, know that a jack, a floor jack, is meant just to raise your car. It's not meant to hold it in place while you work on it. Never go underneath your car when it's just held up by a jack. That's why you utilize jack stands. And that's also why I do my little extra safety precaution of sliding wheels underneath the car. That way, if for some reason the car would fall off the jacks, fall off the jack stands, whatever, uh, then it wouldn't crush you, the person underneath the car. It would just land on these wheels. Obviously, you don't want that to happen either. But uh, this is just a little extra precaution I like to take if I am going to be underneath a car while I'm working on it. And then I'm just going to show you where I had the jack stand placement. You're going to want a solid 
part of the frame uh, somewhere to put your jack stands uh, when you set your car down onto those jack stands. And next we're just going to show this stock front cross member. As you can see there are two larger bolts that hold it to the front lower radiator core support and then it goes to the back of the front subframe where one bolt connects back there. And of course in the middle is the mount where it mounts to the transmission. Now you will probably need a breaker bar for this and you'll want to be careful when you remove these bolts initially. If your car is rusty or if this has not been removed for a long time, these bolts could be very tight. You may also want to potentially spray these with penetrating oil, uh, some PB blaster, something like that as well and leave them sit for a little while before you're doing this because those bolts are going to be very tight and that's again why we're going to utilize uh, this breaker bar to break them loose. I did a clutch on this carb like two years ago, so I removed this bar at that point, so, so I knew my bolts wouldn't be too tight. So of course this is a pretty simple job, there's basically only the two bolts in the front, the one bolt in the rear, and then that transmission bolt and nut that you're going to have to remove. Now the easiest way I found to do this is basically to remove the two bolts in the front and the one bolt in the back, and then you can just let it hang by that transmission mount. And those three larger bolts are going to be 17 millimeter bolts. And then the transmission bolt and nut is going to be a 14 millimeter. So you'll probably want to utilize a wrench and a ratchet to break that loose. And once you have the nut off that bolt, you should be able to remove that bolt. And then this stock front cross member bar should fall out of place. And that's it. We got it removed. And then you will probably just be able to continue on and install your new bar that you have ordered. Uh, but for me, I had to go make the first portion of this video you saw. So I was working with this bar filming overnight. And when I came out to my car the next day, it snowed. So, so much for any consistency with coloring and lighting and stuff. But here we go. I cleared out some snow and got ready to install the bar the next morning. Again, can't emphasize it enough. Be careful. Take proper safety precautions whenever you're working underneath a car. Do not go underneath your car if it's only being held up by a jack. So install, of course, is pretty simple. This piece did fit pretty well when I mounted it up. Again, the first thing I did was held it in place and then put that transmission mount bolt through to just hold it in place for me. And then I put the nut on the other side just to hold that bolt in place. And after that, we're going to install the two front bolts that hold this bar to that front radiator core support. And before we tighten anything up too far, we're going to make sure we get everything started. So I'm going to move more towards the back of the car and tighten up this back bolt. So as I had this video and job almost entirely completed and I looked into the Evo service manual, I realized that this particular bar that we are replacing in this video in the service manual, they refer to it as a front suspension center member. So even though it's technically, I guess, called a center member, um, everywhere I see it is usually referred to as a cross member. But since we're being picky with things, I just thought I would point out that technically they call this the front suspension center member. And torque specs on the two front bolts are 51 foot pounds. Same with the rear bolt and torque specs for that transmission mount nut are 39 foot pounds. So once I have the three mounting bolts tightened up, the final step is just going to be tightening up that transmission mount nut and bolt. And after that, of course, you just need to jack up your car, remove the jack stands and any other safety measures you might have underneath the car. Check and make sure everything's clear underneath the car before you lower it back down. But once you lower it back down, you should be all set. So of course, hopefully you are in warm climates and you can take it for a nice test drive. Otherwise, if you're like me, you can back it in the garage and dream of warmer weather. So that's it for this video, guys. As always, this is Paul from Boosted Film saying thanks so much for watching.